Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Nettleman. I'm a licensed Florida and Texas surveyor as well as attorney, and I love seeing people pass the PS exam. You know, I don't want you to pass this thing, I want you to smoke it. And in order to smoke this exam, I'd like to share with you the top three things every surveyor should know before they jump into the principles and practice of surveying exam. There are more lists of things to know than quantum string theory can account for. You know, this is a new exam blueprint, which is going to be live January 2019. But it's really interesting how little has changed in the past 10 years of this exam. You know, they may have recategorized some things and changed some categories and subcategories, but really not a lot has changed. The one thing I love is they've really added an analysis section because professional surveyors analyze. You collect the record data, you collect the field data, and then your job, what you're getting paid big money for, is to analyze all that stuff and put it together in some kind of comprehensive framework. So I love that NCWS acknowledges this and has really made analysis and thought worth uh, putting on this exam. I always tell surveyors and attorneys, charge for the time that you're thinking about the project because that's what people are paying for. They're paying for your expert knowledge. But anyways, getting back to my original story here, there are so many categories, but I'd like to distill three really important things everyone should know about this exam. It's amazing how the basics will get you so far. You know, there's basically th two different categories or two different types of questions. There's the basic rote memorization, like definitions, and then there's the thought process, the opinions that you form as a professional. And knowing a lot of these definitions is so important. So we'll cover both definitions and thought process in this short video. Another thing that I tell people until I'm really blue in the face is that you have to get a toolbox. Now, not a real toolbox with screwdrivers and hammers and stuff like that, but a surveyor's professional toolbox. And this is where you put your knowledge of boundary surveys, topographic surveys, subdivision surveys, and you start putting together, oh, well, I can draw a subdivision or I know the regulations of a boundary survey, or I can operate a total station to collect topographic data. All of these things are stuff that you probably learned in school, but you've honed your knowledge in practice. And this exam expects you to have field and office experience. And that experience is gonna be what really helps you overcome this exam. Because if you've been practicing for a couple of years, then as long as you review your book knowledge and you review some laws and regulations, you should feel confident going into this exam. So my three top things in my toolbox for the PS is number one, terminology, legal definitions. Number two, surveying standards. How do you do the survey standards to the proper way. What accuracy is required for an ALTA survey? What data must be collected for a boundary survey? And then third uh, is a little basic public land system. Some people may be practicing in Colorado, so you know your PLSS cold. But I'm from Georgia, and before I went to New Mexico to practice, I really didn't know much about the PLSS so let's review uh, type of subdivisions like sections and townships and also corners, meander corners, closing corners, section corners, all that good stuff. Number one is legal terminology. We throw around terms as professionals all the time. Estoppel, latches, adverse possession, acquiescence, but you need to really be familiar. You know, if I said, find the thou weg of the river, 
your mind immediately goes to the deepest channel. Not necessarily the center of the river, but the deepest channel. And I do a lot of fly fishing, so I know that a lot of times you walk in that river, the deep line is right up against one bank. And that's because the river does crazy stuff. Next, parole evidence. Parole evidence is what someone tells you. Parole evidence is spoken evidence from neighbors, property owners, old timers, members of the state historical society. It is spoken evidence. Third, an aliquot part. Now I'm probably jumping ahead to the PLSS, but an aliquot part is just an equal part. So if we have one section of 640 acres and we cut the section into four quarters, we have the Northwest, Northeast, Southeast, Southwest, four equal corners or aliquot parts. And then finally, I love this, it drives me nuts when people don't know this, corner versus monument. A corner is a legal thing. You can form a corner on a survey plat. A monument is a physical thing. It's a rebar, a truck axle, some kind of object on the ground. And a monument could be a senior corner of another property, which is pretty cool. So corner is a legal thing. Monument is a physical thing. Know all of these definitions because, you know, really as a professional, you've got to have a wide and a deep level of knowledge. So take that together and know your legal terminology. Also, before you ever take your PS, you absolutely have to read Brown's Boundary Control. If you want a deeper discussion, go to Clark's. But you should read it, highlight it, dog ear it, and read it all over again. Because there is so much of the PS exam that comes directly out of Brown's. It is a seminal text, and I really enjoy it. Skill number two, survey standards. Legally, a surveyor owes a duty of care to his client. And that means me, as the professional surveyor, must practice with a certain level of competence. If I fall below that level, I'm negligent. And I hate that. You know, I testify against and I write expert report against so many surveyors who do a horrible, horrible job at their profession. And it really makes you sick because you work hard to have a good reputation and a lot of other surveyors do their job poorly. But I want you to know how to do an adequate, a minimally competent survey. And that could be a boundary survey, topo survey, control survey, whatever, doesn't matter. Each type of survey has standards. And my favorite place for standards is court cases. But NCWS's favorite place for standards are best practices. A best practice for ALTA surveys is that your measurement must be 0.07 feet plus 50 ppm in order to be correct, in order to be minimally accurate and precise. That's a relative position. Each point has to be within this error ellipse. If you're outside the ellipse, your ALTA survey fails. If you're inside the ellipse, your survey is good. Another thing is what items are required for an ALTA survey and what items are optional. Basically, what's required of an ALTA survey is do your record research, do your field work, find and set monuments, and show a bunch of stuff. But if your client wants a Cadillac Alta survey, then they can pick from table A. You need to go download the Alta standards and know what's optional, know what's required. Same thing for paper maps. The US National Map Accuracy Standard 
is pretty much always tested on the PS. You're given a map and you're given a scale and it says, does this map meet the standards? Well, according to the vertical accuracy standards, it says that, quote, vertical accuracy as applied to contour maps on all publication scales shall be such as not more than 10% of the data should be one half of a contour interval off. Hmm, what does that mean? So a contour interval is 25 feet for a given map. All right, I'm gonna pick 10 random points on the map, and if one of the 10 or more is off by 12.5 feet, that's half a contour interval, then your vertical accuracy has failed. Go back, read these standards, and if you wanna know more, take the full PS course, because we talk about standards till we are sick of them. And the last one, which is always tested as well, I think, from what I've heard, is the vertical accuracy. So I'm gonna run a level net, differential level, beginning at point A, going all the way around, and back to the same point. During that survey, I have found that the length of the survey is two kilometers all the way around, and I know that my error is about one centimeter. All right, plug in our error, one centimeter, plug in our kilometers, two kilometers, and it pops out your answer. Not quite that simple, but you do have to know what is the best or worst accuracy I can get. Maybe they'll give you a third order survey. How long was the survey in terms of length? You plug this stuff in and you're good to go. So if I said I do a third order survey, I go two times the square root of two because my distance is two kilometers. And you have to be able to compute both what is my order and also compute what is my minimum accuracy allowed. The last thing to talk about is going to be our basic public land systems. And this stuff takes hours. You know, we can't cover all of this in 30 seconds. But I will tell you to know the types of areas, townships, sections, aliquot part, lots, and also to know different types of corners. What is a township corner? What is a witness corner? What is a mile post? And if you're in Alabama, don't get your mile post confused with quarter section corners. So jump in and learn about your PLSS. YouTube is a great place, but if you wanna have a real lesson, come and take the PS course. Well, that ends our course, folks. We've talked about three of the most important things on the PS exam. We've talked about the structure of the exam, what's tested on there, and I'd like you to use this as a jumping off point. You know, I've given you some basics, I've given you some suggestions like Brown's boundary control, and I hope this will be the starting point for your PS study. If you would like to talk to me personally about how to pass this exam, please call me, email me, get in contact on our Facebook or Twitter pages, and let's get you passed on your PS on the first try. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing your passing score very soon.